have an ending, <laughs> <laughs> which was, um, I know it like, sounds like kind of, well, it's pretty obvious you have to have an ending, but we didn't have one and we were, our writer had written an ending, but it didn't work for how the play was going. So we've rewritten it and he approves. So that's good. Um, and it's taken us all this time to find that, but it's, it's, it's been kind of a bit of a, you know, mind bending exercise. Um, and, um, yeah, we got there. So that's, that's really exciting. And we've just been just now working on the transitions because there's, uh, we have a chorus of archivists, city archivists, and, um, who kind of observe some of the action and then become the other characters. It's quite sort of Brechtian in style. And um, they're, they're playing physical five actors playing multiple roles. It's the sort of thing we've seen before, um, but um, it's how you tell it in an in- interesting, interesting way in this kind of technological world that we find ourselves in. So, as a direct um, director, is this shaping up to close to what your vision was maybe a month ago, six months ago, etc.? Um, yes, I think so. It's. Um, I mean, I uh, it's been very much a collaborative process. So um, I had an idea working, I, I knew that I wanted the, the set to be quite a dynamic part of, of the action. Um, so I'm very interested in sets that sind of move and we call, we call the, we have a cell in the set which is made of two sort of steel frames that are on wheels which um, open and close. And I call them jaws and it's as if they're kind of trying to ensnare uh, the different different characters and it, become, it becomes a cell they become individual rooms um, and they can spin around so it also reflects the kind of uh, crazy world that we find at the end where sort of time is running out and Creon is running out of time um, and um, so the set movement kind of reflects that and um, obviously that's just one aspect of the play and it, it's it's um, it's a play about a girl who defies uh, the laws of the state and burying her brother, um, but we set in a very futuristic, you know, Black Mirror esque mm-hmm. type world. So it's it's about how you get the, the story, the innate story across in 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 that fr- in that frame, you know, in that dystopian world, without it becoming too be, being just too distracted by the sort of sci fi element. But fortunately, mm-hmm. <laughs> our sci fi our budget is quite small, so it's really we're imagining a lot of the sci-fi we have you know we're, we're being supported by a great soundscape by matt eaton our sound designer and the lighting by charlotte mclennan so you know we'll be able to sort of create that we, we're not it's not a, a it's not a multimedia piece with screens and not for the kind of touring that we're doing um but we're really wanting to to tell the t- story in a simple way with that backdrop I mean, I'm, I'm looking on the, your tour dates. That's a considerable tour, isn't it? That's going to yeah, take up a lot of... It's a marathon. It's mammoth. It's a mammoth tour. <laughs> yes, it is. Um, I've done many of them um, in the past. So, uh, But this is probably just the longest, the biggest tour we've done. So it's very exciting. <laughs> They're all very excited to go on the road. Um, I, some of them have never been to... Well, one, one graduate, we've got one graduate in our cast who's, who's tremendous. And um, the rest are quite... Uh, recently graduated one one has graduated for a while and um, so they're all they're all raring to go chomping at bits <laughs> is it easy for somebody who's just graduated is this the most easy and accessible thing um piece for them to be involved with uh, if that's not sounding a bit patronizing to them if you know what i mean um i don't think so actually i think um it, it, it the, the kind of world that we're and the um the conventions that we're setting up in in a sense because we've got a sort of Brechtian convention of, of of actors who are on stage the whole time i think for um uh crystal who is our graduate she, she has found it today we were talking about that she finds it very difficult that she's actually being seen and making making some of the changes but we're we're not we're, we're not unafraid of, of showing that we're wanting to to do that quite um quite clearly it's a convention that we want to set up and I think for her she felt initially because that wasn't the plan it you know initially we weren't going to do it but we've decided that's the way just from the from the from the process and I think she's found that kind of um almost 
the, the kind of nakedness of that, you know, the exposure that that lens is quite sort of revealing. I mean, I love that kind of aspect, having done sort of performed Brecht before, and um, you know, Mother Courage and that sort of thing, where you where you're seen and you instantly have to go into a character. And I don't think it's that for her. She, she's they're, they're all very good actors, so I'm sure they'll be able to find that. But it is something you have to instantly turn a switch and become that character, and that's quite a challenge for somebody who's not used to that. So. Um, and also they're multi-rolling. So, you know, Crystal, for example, is playing Eurydice, um, the wife of Creon, and then playing Tiresias, who is a blind prophet. Um, and there again, very, very physically different from Eurydice and kind of otherworldly. Um, so, yeah, it's quite challenging stuff, really. I, I, a few weeks ago, I was, I was reviewing at the Edinburgh Festival, which uh, I, I love to do. Um, but my heart goes out to lots of... Um, groups etc and whether it's a comedian or indeed a physical theatre group who i actually knew so it was great to see them and, and thank god they were good you know <laughs> you always worry but how hard is it to go from the germ of the idea to funding to get this on how, how hard are things these days you know in 2017 oh, oh it's it's really hard <laughs> i mean we we got research and development funding for this project which was great um in february we were funded by the arts council and it grants for the arts uh, you know, up to up to fifteen thousand award, and we applied for second stage funding, and we didn't get it. It's it's tremendously difficult. I mean, you know, and it's the third time for our company that we've applied for second stage funding for projects that have been very successful in their R and D stage, that haven't been funded. And you just think, well, what what are we doing wrong? We've we, we ticked the boxes. We've um, we've had a really good activity report from the first stage. Um, this has got good public engagement. I mean, this project itself is is partly funding for the tour, but mainly it's for a, um, a director's mentorship program. So we're we're really investing in young directors. We've got an assistant and an associate working with us, and one of them said it. Well, both of them have said it's the it's the the most rewarding and learning experience that they've ever had. Um, you know, and and I feel you know supported as well. I mean, sometimes it's very difficult having that many voices in the room, and sometimes I have to say, look, we've just got to you know listen to one voice, and um, we will get there um, because that's you know the collaborative process can be very good, but sometimes it can if you have too many voices, you don't you don't sort of progress. You have to make a decision. Um, so it has been difficult in that respect that. Uh, yeah, we've had to, you know, we've had to really go go back to our venues and say, look, we didn't get our funding. Can you help in any way with accommodation, or can we, you know, we don't want to, we don't want to compromise the production at all. Um, so, yeah, it's it's not easy out there. I mm. think. And sometimes it's mm. it's galling when you hear companies that you know have just got a wash with, with funding, <laughs> and it's never been the case for us really. Mm. Mm. Brilliant. We'll just find out. I hate to sound it sounded a bit like sort of a local radio, but so what would you hope that um, the the Harlow audience would, would going to see the performance? What would you hope they get out of this? Well, I hope that they um, can see an ancient piece transformed into a modern setting, and that the story comes across in a really exciting and dynamic and provocative way and they go away thinking both about the original and um and the adapt ad and the adaptation and mm. and how the two meet really um and they go on some kind of emotional journey you know it, it be it with uh, antigone creon eurydice Haman, or antigone because in this play chris has kind of beefed up some of the incidental more incidental roles and eurydice has quite a journey so does Haman and um, and it's told, the actual story is told from the point of view of Ismaini, which isn't the original version. So we have taken quite a lot of um, poetic license. You know, there, is, there, this is an adaptation. So, but it's also, it is also the play of Antigone. So I hope that, you know, both students and the adults like get, get a lot from that. That's good you introduce say that because there is a lot of A level groups not that far from where you're performing. Yeah, it is a set text for AQA and EdXL, and I think EdXL or Oxford, OCR, Oxford and Cambridge. Um, so yes, we will be expecting. We are doing some workshops and talkbacks and that on the tour. And I love performing to schools audiences because they're the sternest critics in a sense. Mm.